one of the things they get the most questions about, believe it or not, is my center console. So a couple simple things. This is actually a coin holder. It is not stock. It is something I created myself and it is carbon fiber wrapped. It's not done in carbon fiber. Same thing. This is also carbon fiber wrapped. It's just the standard ashtray. I am putting a controls thing in here, but I'm not done with that yet. So that's another time. And then the start button is also pretty stock, except for the B8 driver's ring. And I peeled the top silver part off, so and then used the B8 driver's carbon fiber stick. It's like an overlay. Um, and then I just peeled the top off so it didn't have the shadowing, because I couldn't get it just lined up perfectly. There was always some sort of shadow. So now it just simply lights up. When you start it, the lighting is perfect. There's no shadow or anything. Um, the other thing is my charger is just a wireless charger. It's from like Live Mobile or something. It has a sensor behind it and opens and closes. But the big thing, I get lots of questions about, is my RS and E nav. So the first question I get is mounting it and installing it. As you can see, it comes with a plastic adapter that fits over your MMI. You take the screen out and this literally sort of bolts on there. And then the screen slides onto that. The plastic, it does do a great job of relocating your stock hazards over here. You can still reach them and see them more or less. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. <clears throat> and that just bolts up to the standard wiring harness. Now, I don't want to take the car apart right now, so I do happen to have my wiring harness from my other gen, and they're the exact same. Matter of fact, um, I don't even think I took it out. This is the new one that came with my current um, because they were the same. And you can see it, it's, a, it's a through and through. So, you know, you get one side that goes into the factory harness and then out. So it uh, just sort of patches it in and out easy. Um, just breaks it in same thing with your CAN bus. There are is an adapter that goes in line in your CAN bus. You do have to drop the entire dash to get at it. There's an access point there. So you get at everything, drop it all, and then you put it in line with the CAN bus also, which is this brown. So the brown and the black part goes in line with the CAN bus. Then there's the white part that goes to the back of the unit and um, some other items to help you with amps and so on and so forth. This is the power, so on and all that. So on the back of the screen, which again, I have my old Gen 1, which they're pretty much the exact same. I just got more RAM with it and uh, a different version of the OS. This, so first of all, there's this connector, this white connector that I showed you before. You got a uh, GPS, I believe it is. You get an inline, a 3.5 um, inline audio, so it is technically analog audio. Then you have uh, antenna, I believe that is, and power. So it's pretty simple. So what happens is you feed all those things back through that little bracket that comes in right behind the screen. The screen will actually lift up and slide down, and you just have to plug those in before you slide it down. So it's pretty simple. The hardest part is by far getting the wiring strung through, um, but there's no real cutting or splicing, um, and uh, it's just getting all the wires fed through, and you will have to do some CAN bus resets. I did my CAN bus stuff with an ODB 11, was no problem. Um, I'm sure you could use VAGCOM or pretty much anything else, but the ODB 11 I know does work and do it. So the operation is actually very simple. It's got this little interface here that they've done that sort of look like the regular, the newer Audi interface. You can replace the image. Um, there's a stock image. I did mine with the car uh, just to make it look a little more personalized. Other than that, you'll see that all the standard buttons actually work. You can scroll through um, and select any app just with the push of the button. You know, and then you can use the touch screen also, of course. This brings you home. It works just like any other Android device or tablet. 
Um, also, if you hit the nav integrated nav buttons, they do work, um, which is another great thing. So mine happens to be programmed to Waze. You can use Google Maps or any other Android nav product if you want. Um, I just happen to be a big Waze fan. Uh, it saved me a few times. Um, also, similarly, all the buttons in all the buttons in the uh, dashboard also work, and the uh, wheels also work. So if we start this again, I can do volume from here. I can do volume from there, right? Um, I can also, it does have integrated speech, which will bring up Google Play Assistant to listen to you for a second if you want. Cancel. Pardon? And then also same thing, you can use mode to sort the of switch Bucks between is apps. unable to be operated with a voice recognition system at this time. Well, thank you so much. And if I want, I can use this nav button Navigation to go right back to nav, active. right? So it's uh, fully integrated in. And then all the car button controls work too, right? So same thing, you can use all the car menus normally just by going into that interface, hitting the button, get back to RS nav just by hitting that. Now, a couple of questions I get. Um, service i have brought this car into service multiple times four or five times at least with the rs nav um, matter of fact it's been to two different dealerships i've never had a problem since the interface works from the buttons they don't have an issue um, and matter of fact i can tell you that in one of the dealerships my local dealership where it's been a few times i know at least one of the techs have actually bought the rs nav since then a couple of the others i guess have Acquired, but one of them's actually purchased it and put it in one of his cars because uh, he liked it so much. Then um, another question I get is sort of reliability. I haven't had a problem. The Gen 1 unit I did have an issue with. Um, I called their support or I actually emailed their support. They were quick at getting back to me. There's a gentleman named Daniel who does a lot of the support. Um, I think he even Skype sessioned me at first just to make sure that he needed a replacement. Then he shipped me a replacement. Um, I wanted to, uh, I think I paid to get it expedited. I had it in a week um, and I just shipped him the old parts back, no problem. So they've been really good about that. Um, there's also some CAN bus interfaces here. You can get the, you know, your speedometer and stuff. Um, there is one for the climate control. I don't use it. I find it buggy. I hear that it works better in the new version. This is the 10.23 or whatever, 10.3 uh, version. Um, it's running, I think, Android 7. Um, I'm waiting. I'm probably going to do the 12 inch unit. It'll be a little bit bigger, obviously, but I'm going to give it a try. And I think I'm waiting till it's a new version. Android 9, I think, is the version I'm waiting for before I go and do that. Um, otherwise, you know, you can sort of play with colors and all that kind of stuff. I don't tend to. I like the, the interface as it is. Um, any number of apps are available. You can run things. You know, I, I get questions like, can you watch Netflix and all that stuff? Yes, um, I've done Netflix and YouTube. I don't really tend to watch videos while I'm driving, but you certainly could. It does work. Um, it does do integration into Bluetooth. I tend to use the Bluetooth from the uh, car itself. It sort of works seamlessly anyways. Um, again, because all the car features work. So I pair it with the car. I don't tend to pair it with this. Um, it ends up treating the RS Nav just like an aux media interface. Um, and then I just pair it with the, it can just go back and forth between the media programs or the radio same thing it's got an fm radio in it the reception is not fantastic in my experience um, the one in the car works great so i tend to switch back and forth for that too uh, but a lot of what i do is stream it's a typical wi-fi interface um, just like um, just like if you're using any android system so you can literally just go in and you can configure what wi-fi you connect to give it a password, whatever else. It will auto search. I tether it to my phone while I'm driving. It works fine um, and gives me all the bandwidth I need to stream music or listen to podcasts or 
the radio and, and plus use the nav system which is by far what i use it for the most overall i'm very happy with them um, i would say anybody who's looking to get a little bit more in the way of their entertainment system out of the audi um, should definitely check out rs nav they've been great for me and i hope they'd be great for you have a great day